Yo guys, what's up and I hope you're all doing great. In this video, I will tell you my best tips that I wish I knew as a new victim player in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Also, let me know your best tips for playing victim in the comments down below. Tip number one, don't wake up grandpa in the beginning of the game because other family members cannot enter the basement before grandpa is awake. And then you only have to deal with Leatherface, which is very easy because there's an abundance of wall gaps and crawl spaces in the basement and sometimes she's not even in the game, which makes it even more important to keep grandpa asleep. Alright, let's talk about what wakes grandpa up. Making too much noise, like slamming the doors and rushing into directions like toolboxes or bone scraps and going over the noise limit. Opening the metal basement doors also wakes grandpa up and the family feeding grandpa blood to level 1 will wake him up as well. And lastly, when Leatherface gets a kill in the basement. So obviously try not to get killed too early. Breaking free of your restraints in the beginning of the game does not wake up grandpa. So try to get up on your feet as fast as possible and spam that interaction button. Keeping grandpa asleep will not only buy you and your team more time to fill up on items, but also more time to unlock all the basement doors easily without the pressure of all family members trying to get a piece of that cake. I have seen a lot of Johnnies waiting on the other side of the door for like 10 minutes contemplating their life choices. So the best strategy, and I think this is very very important, is to try to unlock all the basement doors without opening them. Because grandpa will wake up once you open the door, but he won't wake up when you just unlock the door. And this is crucial to surviving the early game. You can find unlock tools in the blue toolboxes that spawn randomly in different locations. With time, you will learn all these locations and be able to unlock the doors extremely fast. So when you unlock all the basement doors first before going upstairs, then you always have the opportunity to run back down into the basement when getting chased without getting stuck or trapped by a locked basement door facing certain death. I can't count the times I got trapped down a ladder with Johnny stabbing me in the back without a way to escape because you can't go up the ladder and you can't go into the basement because the door is still locked. So once you're ready to go upstairs, it's also a good strategy to open a basement door, which makes a lot of noise and then fake out the family by not going upstairs, but using a different door instead. This way the family will think that you're coming up that way, but in reality, you're not. In this game, there are a lot of these little mind games that you can pull off to keep the family guessing where you are. And if you don't want to miss any more guides, news and updates on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate that. Next tip is gonna be bone shards. Before you are leaving the basement, try to always have a bone shard in your pocket. Because these little bones, they really have a lot of value for you. You can use them in a lot of different ways. First, you can use it to stab a family member in the back with a sneak attack to stun them for a pretty long time. For this you will need to get behind them in order for the prompt to show up. This works on all family members and it's a great way to help out another victim who's getting chased and to buy them some time. So be a good teammate and help those fellow victims. You can also use the bone shirt to initiate a grapple fight but this does not work on Leatherface. To do this you have to face them from the front and the prompt will appear. If you win the grapple fight the family member gets stunned but be aware that other family members can kill you while you are still in the interaction animation. That's why you should only use this as a last resort or when you know that nobody else is around. Most of the time as a victim you will win these fights because it's slightly in favor of the victim. But be careful if you are playing with a victim with very low strength attribute like Julie for example because the chances are high that you will lose the fight and get killed. I got killed so many times when I initiated a grapple fight with Julie even though I was full HP. And this can be really frustrating. So another way to stun the family members is if you slam a door in their face which throws them on the ground and stuns them for a long time. To do this you have to sprint and slam a door while they are standing on the other side. Alright, but what else can you do with a bone scrap? You can also stab grandpa which will drop grandpa levels by one and strip the family of their valuable grandpa perks. You can also remove the traps of Hitchhiker and Nancy with a bone scrap or escape a Hitchhiker trap very fast by using it. But this is only one time use and the bone scrap will be gone. Then you also can cut down all the hanging bones that reveal your position when you run through them. And you can also kill Nugget with it. That's the chicken in the cage. You can find bone shards in pile of bones that usually spawn in the basement a lot but also on the upstairs levels. So bone shards are extremely useful in this game. And then you also want to have a lockpick in your pocket before you go upstairs. This way you are always able to unlock doors if there is an opportunity for that. So it's always easier to fill up on items in the basement rather than upstairs where the family can easily see and hear you. And remember, your escape can always be a lockpick away. Next tip is learn your ability. Each character has a unique ability, so make sure you know everything about it so you can get the maximum potential out of it. For example, Connie's ability will unlock a door instantly, but it will also strip a lot of her stamina. So make sure that the bar is full before using it. All victims also have different base attribute stats. 
that really make a gameplay difference and you can really feel a difference in game. For example, proficiency, which makes picking locks a lot faster. You can spend attribute points to change the strengths and weaknesses of your character. In the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you can oftentimes escape without relying on your team too much, not like in Dead by Daylight, for example. But communication is still very useful to let your teammates know what exits you're working on and where the family members are, if you're getting chased and so on. With good communication, your chances of escape are way higher. Next tip, learn the maps. You need to know where all the exits on each maps are and how to open them. This will take a lot of time, but be patient and try to learn the maps layout and also you can ask your team. They can help you find the right exit. You can find map layouts for different maps and also for the basements on Reddit. A very important tip for success is also to know when to play stealthy and when to rush. Once you learn this and you know when to be sneaky and when to rush an objective, this will level up your gameplay and your escape rate will go up. For example, if you know that two or more family members are currently chasing someone else on the other side of the map, then I will play very fast and try to rush the exit on my side of the map because they are not guarding it and will not be able to stop me right now. You always need to find these small windows of opportunity to make progress towards escaping. It's usually better to play sneaky, slowly and tactical in order to escape. A good tactic that I use oftentimes is to wait until a family member checks the door I want to unlock and the moment that they leave, I start working on it because it's very likely that they will not come back to check it again in the next 30 seconds. All right, next tip, stamina management. In this game, your stamina is very limited and once you run out of stamina as a victim, you are a sitting duck and you're basically dead. All right, let's talk about the different movement speeds that you can use. So first you can crouch walk and also you can crouch sprint which doesn't consume any stamina and then of course you can walk normally this also doesn't consume any stamina and then you have this normal sprint speed that will consume your stamina at a pretty slow rate but there's also something else and i didn't notice when i started playing victims for a long time you can also start sprinting even faster by pressing the spacebar on pc but this will drain your stamina very quickly and gives you a big speed boost generally you don't want to sprint all the time because you need to recover your stamina during a chase so if you have a short breathing room, stop running and recover your stamina. This way you can keep the chase going forever. You can also use the sprint mechanic in a chase when a family is right about to hit you to make them miss their hits. This way you will save stamina and start sprinting in a perfect moment. You can either do this while walking normally and then start running once they get close to you or when you are running already, try to slow down to make them think they can hit you and then start sprinting again. This will make them miss their hits and waste their stamina. And once they run out of stamina completely, they will get stuck, which gives you more time to escape. Also, they'll get pretty mad once they realize that they can't get you and will have to stop the chase. And now my tips for getting chased. So once you're in the chase, try to break line of sight as fast as possible and quickly hide in a dark corner or hiding spot because the family doesn't have the time to search for too long. So it's best not to just keep running in a straight line, but instead go through wall gaps and crawl spaces to find a safe hiding spot until they pass by and leave. If a family member chases you for a very long time, but they can't get the kill on you, then you really came out on top because they just wasted all the time chasing you, essentially making the game a 2 vs 3 and giving your teammates the opportunity to open exits and escape. Next tip, applying pressure on the family. You need to always apply pressure on the exits when the family is occupied with chasing someone else or when they are protecting another exit. For example, you could try to open an exit like fuse box or pressure valve or opening a gate to another area of the map to apply pressure on the family and distract them. This opens up the opportunity for you to escape on a different exit because they cannot guard everything at the same time. This is a very good strategy and high level players use this all the time. You also need to learn about the family members, the abilities and how to best counter them. For example, Leatherface can one-shot you with his overhead attack and he can also destroy crawl spaces. So try to avoid getting hit by Leatherface by moving unpredictable, using wall gaps and crawl spaces or jumping in lockers. You can use these things to your advantage and waste this time. For Hitchhiker and Sissy, they can go through wall gaps and crawl spaces and keep chasing you, but they don't really do so much damage. And then there's Johnny, Cook and Nancy, they can't go through crawl space at all. So try to use the weaknesses of the family members to your advantage and exploit them. The more family members are chasing you, the better it's for your team. So try to stay alive and keep them busy. This next tip I didn't knew myself for a long time. You can heal other victims with your own health potions, but make sure they actually need the heal by communicating because you can always heal them even though they're nearly full HP. Please don't waste your health and ask them before doing it. Right, next tip, use the welds. When you're getting chased outside of the basement, you can always use the welds as a last resort to escape, but you will take a good amount of damage when falling down the well. So be careful if you are too low on health because then you might become incapacitated. And the second time this happens, you're gonna be dead. If you're not getting 
chased, you can just go back into the basement through the stairs if you need to heal up. Once you're back in the basement, really take your time to heal up and fill up on lockpicks and bone shards so you're ready for your next attempt to escape with the best odds of surviving. Which leads me to my next tip, always make a game plan. So this is something that I usually do and I want you to think about something that you want to accomplish in this match. For example, I really want to use the pressure valve as a distraction and escape at the battery exit. This way you have a clear plan in mind and you don't run around like a headless chicken and waste everyone's time. For this to work, you will have to learn all the valve handled spawns and also the valve tank spawn locations on this specific map. And with time, you will learn from these attempts and become a better player overall. If you keep all these tips in mind, you will become a better player and start escaping and surviving a lot more. If you found these tips helpful, go smash the like button and also subscribe to my channel so you won't miss anything on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day and I see you in the next one. Peace.